How's it going, Brucey? Good, bud. Did you get all teed up? Yeah, I'm ready. What's that thing? It's a it's a salt gun to kill hornets in the trailer. Oh, a CO a CO two salt gun. I mean, this thing will take the pain off. I've only got the old pump action. I got her in the cabin, but I leave it there, and the salt gets all coagulated in there. Oh my god! Now drunk woods diving into my gliders. Focus up here, Brad. We're we're on the air. Okay, we're good. Yeah. Brad wrangled us up. Kenta Kamira. Is it Kumara or Kamira? I should know how to say that by now. He's a damn stud angler from Japan, and he uh, made the opens look easy last year. Brad riled him up. We're going to have him on right away here. Holy Christ, my thing's wrong still, Brucey. Come over here, Drunkwood. It says <laughs> bard on there. Oh, I did that. Oh, yeah. Son. I also I set mine to bard in tribute. No, we can't do that. People gave me a hard time at the classic. Well, you spelt your name wrong, Why? and it's only four letters. So, yeah, you're going to get uh, I think he'd have to kick you out. <laughs> oh, my God, Brucey. We got quit yelling in here. We're on it on the yeah, air, Brad. This is a professional show. We got uh, Drunkwood Inky on the side. They're coming at us from Matt Robertson's trailer. Brad has assured proper internet connection this time. What do you think, bud? Ah, I don't know. I mean, I hope we get through the night. It should be good. Yeah. Uh, what? I mean, I haven't really been doing much but scouting turkeys and recovering from the classic and getting ready for the invitational on kentucky which starts practice in like a week from monday and researching questions to ask kenta and have a smooth podcast right because the trailing training wheels are coming off tonight bud it's all uh, you. i didn't do a lot of research but i can probably wing it i'm pretty good at winging things <laughs> all right well we'll get into that in a second first we got a shout out chris johnston just won the no scope invitational whatever they're calling it the professional or the Touring Anglers Association, the $5,000 entry fee, no live scope, no pre-fish, no information, no 360 tournament. Good showing by the Canadian boys, Corey, Chris, Gussie, all held spots in the top 10. Uh, I don't have the list in front of me, and I obviously have a bias towards Canadians, but um, yeah, Emil Wagner got third, kind of shut some of the the no live scopers up. Uh, pretty cool to see. And our buddy and friend of the show, Brad's travel partner, my travel partner from last year, Adam Rasmussen, second place showing at the Classic. We haven't done a show since then. Uh, pretty wild for a guy from the Open to just win a tournament on Wheeler Lake and then almost win the Bassmaster Classic and right back to the Open. So shout out to Raz and Justin Hamner on the on the win. That was a pretty awesome week. Yeah, I mean, wild wow, gives you hope, doesn't it? Like. Have a good tournament and almost win the classic. That's super impressive and kind of what everyone's shooting for. And God, he was so close. Bummer he didn't make it, but real awesome showing, a lot of publicity. And I mean, the classic never lets you down. It's my second year going to him, and wow, it's impressive. Yeah, nice scripted answer, Brad. You're gonna have to loosen up a little <laughs> bit for Kenta. I'm telling you, this uh this bubblegum stuff you're giving me isn't going to cut it. The reason everyone wants to hang out with you off the podcast is because you're funny. <laughs> you make good points. And here you beef it up to like a scripted answer. Yeah. This is kind of on the air though. You know, you got to yeah. be kind of proper, right? No. Let loose. No? I was, Gussie was just on the Get the Net podcast and he called a bunch of guys crybabies for not fishing <laughs> the No Live Scope Derby. For not nutting up. And he's the, probably the best, you know, one of the best spoken elite high level anglers. Yeah. So he can be himself, you can. Okay. I'm going to loosen up. I'm going to let it hang out. Okay. Good. Okay. Because the wheels are off tonight, bud. I'm You're... off my game. I haven't been sleeping. Kids been screaming. Really? She's a wild one. Yeah. Um, before we get Kenta in, uh, Got to remind you about this. Blue Storm PFDs. Uh, if you followed me at all in the Opens last year, you'll know that I was wearing like a 1996 Steedoo life jacket. I was not a believer in the inflatable PFDs. I just couldn't find one that was comfortable enough. 
they're always bunching up on my back and I hated them. Been running the blue storm this year. Can't believe I waited that long for an upgrade. Check out the link in the description below. Save yourself 15 points. Nice little promo code down there, Brad. Yeah. I mean, I've been running blue storm the last couple of years and very comfortable, very safe. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you save a bunch of money ordering on the promo. Definitely time to get one. The ice is melting and time to get out fishing, especially in the North country. I'm going ice fishing this weekend. Maybe no. I'll wear it. Yeah. Yeah. Do a video wearing it. Don't fall in though. I'm not going to fall in. There's way too much ice still. That's crazy, Brucey. It sucks, bud. It's part of the North. What's the next plug? <laughs> Got to get the plugs out of the way. It's easy. They're all along the top here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got, we got to give a big shout out to Omnia and the app, the fishing app. It, it, uh, it's coming in real handy. It's got a little sneak out there, and it's it's an app that basically shows you whatever you need to know on whatever body of water you're heading to. It has lake, it has uh, Navionics, so one foot contour. It has you know water temperature, boat ramp. It has basically everything you want to know about a lake, and it's you know really nice. Sitting in the trailer, checking that out, seeing what the water temps are, where the clear water is, uh, very helpful. And I believe you get a seven-day free trial period. It's right around $50 a year. Pretty good investment for what you're getting. Yeah, I've been checking it lots up here, and it's just been uh, white screen. Just ice. No change. Water well, it's accurate. It's free. accurate, man. Oh, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. It's a pretty damn handy tool. Especially if you're hopping around all over the place, see water clarity, all the layers, everything like that. Uh, powerhouse batteries goes without saying. Everyone saw the showing at the classic, Kyle and Raz, and um, the boys are running it. You know, it's uh, there's a reason that someone like Milliken runs it. Um, you know, you could pick any battery brand he wants, and that goes for a lot of people. And that little bit of extra performance and just peace of mind when you're fishing for a living or just trying not to ruin your weekend goes a long way. Check those out. They've got some in stock at Omnia. There's a link down below. Uh, and if you're up in Canada, we can get you some of those too at sports headquarters. Um, what else we got here? Crush city. I don't even want to say anything cause they don't, <laughs> that's been the buzz around the classic, like, uh, the big joke is I don't care what shape it is or what color, as long as it's a gizzard shad freeloader, the boy, yeah. <laughs> those things are selling. I brought a couple packs down with me and uh, they're like currency in the Southland now. So if you haven't checked out crush city yet, check it out. Uh, there's some Canada exclusive stuff too, that uh, might be worth a look. You can see that if you look North of the border on the line and uh, yeah, otherwise, Powertran jack plates. Talk about Powertran. Always working hard for us. The a lot of people don't know about them, but they uh, build a real awesome electric jack plate that you can preset your you know running top speed or if you're getting out of shallow water. It's a really neat deal. Like I didn't know how much I you know everyone's used to running the little knobs on the side and. It took a little bit to get used to, but once you're used to it, man, that thing is slick. She's heavy duty too. That oh yeah, is some thick material she's made of. If you size it up, you know, beside like a industry standard jack plate, you'll see that it's uh, it's made to last. You don't want to have that cracking when you crush a cypress tree or anything like that, or if you're all jacked up, you know, hit a rock or something. So little bit of peace of mind there check those out link in the description below i think that's it brad we're ready to send you to the wolves i'm going to sign off of here i'm going to oh dial up kenta and i'm just going to be your ginger ninja i'm the producer tonight bud no i'm the talent director you have to do all the talking i'll make you a deal if you can run the podcast hosting platform piece her well, together well no you said you said enough you said enough i'm in okay I'll text them and uh, it's all you. We'll see you on the other side. You're not going to be on? Are you no, crazy? I told you I'm signing off. It's all you. No way. I told you twice today and then again just now. Okay. Just give Maybe me a signal. Crazy. Give me a signal if you need me. I need you.
<laughs> you. All right. Well, maybe I'll just stick around then. I won't say anything. No, I won't do that. I'm going to hop out. We're to the training no. wheels. The training wheels are on. around. Come on, Bruce. I'm still going to be here. You're the co host. You got to stick around. You're the brains in the operation. What's going on, Kenta? Hey, how you doing, guys? Hey, Kenta. How's it going? How much? Are you in the trip? Are you in the camper? Yeah, I am. I'm on the way down to Florida. I don't even know where I'm at right now. <laughs> Did you have to pull over or are you done driving for the night? Uh, just just done driving for tonight. I got plenty of time until practice start. Kenta, I got a similar camper to you, uh, a four-wheel camper. Where do oh, you really? park, where do you park when you're driving? Do you stop at like the Love's travel station? Yeah, or... Love's is the best one. That's why okay. I'm at right now. I was trying to navigate that. I couldn't quite figure out where to pull over. <laughs> yeah, and... that's yeah, Love's in the I believe it's the state of Georgia, so I got a pretty good signal here. Nice good deal. You got you, you ever pull over at the Bucky's? I had me and Pat Renwick on the way to the. Yeah, I ha I have, but you know that place is so busy. You know, I just want to yeah. stay quieter. <laughs> yeah, I so, I lost I lost Pat Renwick in a Bucky's on the way to Matt's wedding last weekend for like uh -huh. two hours. Really. Yeah, he's like a little child. You gotta keep him close, otherwise he's oh. gone. All right. Yeah, that's yeah, that's why you know love is probably the best one to stay. And if you want to, you can get you can pay like sixty bucks to get an electric, but which I don't ever need it on my camper. Nice. So uh, Austin said you're gonna come stay with us up in the up on Leech. Oh, I, I didn't I didn't realize what he was talking about you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, no. that'd be awesome. Yeah, because you know we probably only have day and a half practicing on that one. <laughs> if we do get in the same world, man, so I figured it'd be just easy to stay somebody's house. Or are you own a house over there, or is that where you live? Uh, no, my parents have a cabin up there, like a family cabin that okay. been family forever. So oh, okay, that'd be nice. Yeah, it'll be awesome. I mean, I might have to check out some of those sneak lures you got in your boat, probably. I mean, <laughs> I don't even know what the fishery they got in the leech lake. There might be a large mouse in it. Or oh, some small mouse, too. There's some, there are a lot of walleyes. Really? A lot of walleyes, a lot of oh. northerns, some bass, a few bass. I've never been there in my life, so I'm pretty excited on that one. Yeah, that'll be a good time. You guys will probably be getting there super late, though. Yeah, that's what I mean. You know, it don't matter if I can find a fish on the day and a half. I can't find. I can't never find him. So. <laughs> oh, you'll find him just fine. I'm pretty okay. sure it'll be a scope and derb. Oh yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> that's. I mean, I I don't know about a Florida, but it's been a dominated in this year because it's Bassmaster flipped over the schedule. So that makes a big difference, you know. Yeah, it'll be a different. Are you looking forward to Florida, or you kind of liked it before? I mean, I used to never like it, but you know, but it's even better to me to have a tournament and a postal spawn instead of the price spawn because you know I always get my ass whipped and Florida. So <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I don't do very good in Florida either. Yeah, that's just a different animal. So. Yeah. What? Uh, why the heck do you do all nine opens? Isn't that just like crazy, crazy I mean, for you or no? No, not really. I mean, why I'm here in the United States, I ain't got nothing else to do. So just push all of them, just like everybody else is walking. I still got enough day off and stuff like that. So, so what? What do you do when you don't have a tournament? You're fishing on different lakes, or I mean, trying to get on the pre-fishing. Whenever I, I get time, but I figure you know, what's even better was fish all, all nine of the open and staying in the competition straight, you know, straight months and stuff like that because that that's where I can just stay on the right kind of mindset. Yeah, do you hate, you know do you hate I mean? all the boats in the opens? Like, does I'm it? Sorry? Are you used to all the boats in the opens, or do you like when you get the room to breathe on the elites? Uh, I mean. 
I like them both way, you know. <laughs> like in the elite, there's all they're all good ones, you know. Yeah. But in the open, more numbers of both. But obviously, to me, with my opinion, I think it's a less pressure than hundred bolt in the elite. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. No kidding. Well, and the opens are good for you too, because you're a you're a notorious retread, Fred. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't do that well in the last probably eight tournament by myself. So, you know, I, I just trying to get back in confidence mode, you know. Because huh. since last fall, I kind of quit, quit catching because I'm trying to find something else than scoping, but I really can. But I know yeah. it's going to, I mean, over in Japan, it's already kind of beat them up on that way. And I mean, people still catch them on, but nobody fishes shallow anymore. What happened is they just start showing up in shallow fishing again. So that would happen pretty soon. Shallow's getting better again, you're saying? Yeah, kind of. I mean, I'm not saying better than used to, but I mean, nobody fishes it. Yeah, that's cool. You get kind of a glimpse into the future then of what's yeah. coming here. Yeah, because about the time we we got a live scope or all the kind of world facing sono back in Japan, what happened is we already beat all that fish before even that thing's coming out. You know what I mean? It was too, way too late. So we we all know fish was there with a side scan or two Ds, and we right. already beat them up. So it, it didn't work like that here, like like this country. You know, it's already beat them up. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that no live scope tournament that was just in Georgia? I, I was I was I was kind of wanted to fish it, and you know several guys called me to do it, but honestly, you know I only been there just a day. Yeah. one day in my life and they only gave us a three hour practice and i'm like well i don't even know where the bulk dock is at <laughs> so if i had been there with just a different tournament or whatever you know i probably would do it are they already over today or yeah chris johnston won oh yeah side fish fish yep yeah yep. he got an eight pounder yesterday oh my gosh <laughs> i didn't even know they had an eight pounder <laughs> I mean, it's an awesome place. I, I'm looking forward to fishing some tournament in Lanier. That's one of my favorite lakes now. I mean, I've only been there once, but it's not that easy, like, to just get the single bite because them fish is so beat them up. That was one of the hardest fish to bring with a forward facing sauna. Yeah, you got to get her out to like 130, 140 or further, hey? Yeah, or, you know, like some kind of special bait, you know, to get them, to get them eat it. So, a live it, herring. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I'm, I know they had to fish it around the herring fish, but it did little, little ahead of it. Because do I feel you, like how well is probably 10 times easier than linear fish. Do you, do you have like a secret fish recipe like Taku or? Do you just borrow no, his? No, 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 really. I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't really fish in Japan anymore. So what I do is, as soon as I get back home, I'm just going straight to the ocean fishing lures, to look for something new. Well, that's awesome. You, yeah, you're, uh, you you're, you're pretty uh, influential with your lure designing. Are you working yeah. on anything special now, or? I mean, I do, like, I've been working on a ladder trap and buzz bait, and pretty simple bait, you know, kind of general bait and a couple of, few of the plastic bait, but I'm, compared to some of the younger guys, I'm like old school guys, you know what I mean? I'm 42 years old and, you know, I'm not, you know, new guy anymore, so. Yeah, I hear you. I'm about at retiring age and I'm just getting started. Got to be How old are you? 45. 45. Oh, yeah. We're about the same range, so. Yeah. Well, I look well, a lot older. I'm a lot grayer than you. Yeah. I mean, that's how Japanese blog was. <laughs> you got to smoke think? more, Brad. I got to smoke that? more. You got to smoke more and you won't go gray. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or maybe Are you guys all smoking? Ah, uh, once in a while. What? Uh, mm. Maybe those Red Bulls are the secret. Maybe they keep the gray away. Might be. <laughs> I mean, I only drink that many in the tournament day, 
So I'm, right now I'm drinking water. Yeah, that's good. What What's your favorite uh, spice on the Red Bull, or what's your favorite kind? I mean, I do start it up with a brew edition in the morning, just trying okay. to get me enough sugar to just a kickstart. Yeah. And I'm going to stay with a sugar-free rest of the day. That's why I don't get too much sugar, you know what I mean? Oh, that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Huh. Who the heck has that motorcycle derby going on around him? Yeah, is that that's you, Brucey? No, <laughs> no, that's me. <laughs> it's my what are, you are they four wheelers or snowmobiles? Uh, I don't even know. It's like I think <laughs> just a motorcycle. Somebody just driving around this parking lot. What uh, what baits did you design, Kenta? That like I I don't know anything I, about. I got, like, just heard I got you're a several. Designer. Several bait for the depths and also the. I used to work as a, work with the Blackley Japan. Yeah. Which is, they don't sell every single one of them all in the United States because, you know, I kind of design a unique way. Right. And what? also, I'm working with a Mega Bass now for Soft Plastic. Were you, were you part of the force behind the Sakamata shot? Yeah, no, really. I mean, that's. That's guy owns a dab's design it and I mean we didn't even think that's gonna work that good here in America. Which, <laughs> I mean since since Koyo said about Sakamata, they said everybody called me in and asked me for Sakamata and every time I get an ask, I, I told him, Hey, trust me, I've been sold this thing for fifteen years. Oh well, I would say twelve years. And <laughs> never even walked like that. So it's not just where you wise, trust me. Yeah. Because I mean, yeah. Koyer, Koyer was setting 35 ward. He was, he was standing with one eighth ounce weight. And I knew the fish was swimming around. So I'm like, how the heck could it even possible to drop the front of a face in 35 foot food water with one eighth ounce? The Kai Patrick was sitting right next to him. He thought Koyer was walking on the bottom because he fished so slow. He was using an eighth ounce? One eighth, yep. And 316, he said. That was 35 foot of water. And the fish was swimming around pretty pretty fast. So he he's fishing. Be... He's doing all the opens, too, this year. No, he said he was going to, but he skipped the Santee. So now I'm on, only one look for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was at the he was at the St. Lawrence Open last year. Yeah. And he, he was staying at the same hotel uh -huh. that, uh, like, me and Danny and Corey Johnson were at. Yeah, and I came back one night, and half the parking lot of the hotel was covered off with pylons, and uh -huh. he had his, he had laid them all out and put his truck and boat on the other side, so he had a big full turnaround. Uh huh. So I took all the pylons, and I threw them in the bush. <laughs> <laughs> you bully, Brucey. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the Hollywood yeah. treatment. <laughs> he opens. <laughs> yeah, he he wants everything perfect, you know. That's, that's just a little different, you know. He wants, extension everyone, he wants every everyone good and far away from yeah, him. Yeah, because if, like he, his extension cold is just a perfect spot every day. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I know how how you feel. I, I want to pull all those extension goals and straighten it up, but you want to be perfect. So. so you're the only one doing all all nine again. You finished fifth uh, last year, so. right? Yeah, you know, first last year and the year before. The year before he finished fifth, too? Yes, yeah, but which didn't do nothing, really. <laughs> just, just all it is is just trying to stay sharp. And also, I want to compete with some younger guys, you know. Yeah, that's you a, want to see that's another, Yeah, I, you know, there ain't no way you can complain about forward facing solo now because all the guy in the open is even better than some of the elite guy, you know what I mean? And that that's definitely a good place to learn it. You know what's coming in the year after, because we we're gonna have to compete with that guys in the elite again. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. a good call. But I I don't know what what the people think that you know some of the guys win it or do so good in the first event, and everybody can do it with a live score. But there ain't no way. Them I've seen every single one of them of the new rookies in the pre fishing. In the months ago, every single one of them. So I would say they are working hard. Yeah. And we all know that because we're, you know, we're in the opens and watching uh -huh. it. You, but, you know how, how them guys are. I mean, they're like, 
like JD Tompkins, he he's he's been there for probably almost all months over the winter. Tyler Williams too. I mean, yeah. he's there. I, I was asking the Tyler, what, hey, did you even back in the home in the Christmas time? And I I don't I don't think he did either. No, so well, he's been on the load of all I just, long. I just talked to Kyle Patrick yesterday, uh-huh. and he he was at JT Tompkins' house. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, I've been here for a few days. I said, well, where's JT? He's like, oh, they're all the whole crew's all oh man pre practicing on Lake Murray already. He's like, they won't yeah. be home. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he shows me that how many waypoint in a toilet event. I mean, I I told him, man, how do you even remember all this waypoint? He got like. 2,000 waypoint on his graph. Yeah. Everywhere. Dude. They can Dude, keep uh, it. They're working hard for it. There's no oh question yeah, Absolutely. There. Did Tyler Williams give you a subway when you were talking to him or no? <laughs> I mean, no. Didn't give me a subway, but he gave me a tiny crash once. He gave you a tiny crash? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, really? I thought he was going to ask me a tiny crash, but he actually gave me a tiny crash. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Oh my God! I yeah, didn't know that really happened. Yeah, I got a, really a I got a jig here I made for Tyler Williams. Oh really? Yeah. It's a, a one ounce so, rubber. Oh yeah. He he always uses three quarter heavier. I know it's got. That's what I'm. Yeah, it's got to be heavier for like reaction. And I yeah, said, Would you I, use I told him how. Yeah, how do you even not hung it up every cast? He said he's good at it. You know, <laughs> snagging. I'm like, no. <laughs> still, you know. But you know, I I, I kind of know I'm doing a little bit too much, too many things to fish and tournament. But he's saying on the one thing, pretty much one thing. I yeah, figured that's said, the best way to win. He said at the St. Lawrence River, he tried force feeding him that three quarter ounce jig <laughs> there too, and got 120. <laughs> like it was the well, only place they wouldn't need it. It was my worst tournament. <laughs> right, right. But you know, he can be a like, you know. He can like that once or too. twice in a year, but he can also have same amount of chance to win. Yeah, with how good he is, you know. So, yeah, yeah. No, that total money wise, money wise, trust me, he went more more than I did last year. So, yeah, it's better to get like win once. three, win once, or get three or four top tens than it is yeah. to just oh, like, yeah. get a forty. Just like, right there, yeah, yeah. That's what what I think, and man, I I want to win more than do good on the point. So, but you know, my mind is kind of always kind of kind of scared too much to do something I'm good at it because know too much about it. So what what is your go to count if you you're busting down a new lake? What are you what are you throwing out there? What what's uh, your favorite? That's that's a really hardest question. I mean, I'm. I'm mean, used to be just a shallow fisherman, like everybody else. You know, I'm 42 years old and grew up with like what you guys do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I grew up in the Hydrolito, like over in Japan. That's that's how I learned it all about fishing. So I like to stay in the grass or either fripping or frogging. Are but you, that uh... was just a starting point. But I'm tr- always trying to find something. People don't do it because you know you're competing with some good shallow guy and there's like probably 50 percent of the field in the, any tournament is a whole good shadow fisherman so yeah i mean if you can hold out another five years they'll probably be all scopers if you're the last shallow guy in you'll be cleaning their clocks i think if you're about a five years it's gonna be a 50 50 or maybe something new things coming up because right now you know, scoping things dominated, but like I said earlier, over in Japan, it's already not that great anymore. So you almost have to fish in either extremely finesse or do completely different. Like that's why I always want to stay in sh- shallower in back in the home, like Biwa, because everybody else is out there and look for it. Yeah, and I'm not a very good swimmer, so if I fall out of the boat, I like to be able to touch bottom most times. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's just hard to say, but I feel like I, we are missing something big, big way to catch and fish, you know. That's that's always I'm trying to think, you know, if locals, local guys say, 
you know, Carolina is big go to date here in this like, of course I'm gonna have one rigged up, but I was yeah. just trying to find something, you know, they're missing. Yeah. Are you uh do you like throwing the glide baits around or I do too, but that's the only time I have to because the bigger bait is more oh the bigger bait has more chance to lose the fish. Yeah. So yeah, it's a fun to fishing fishing with it, but not really. I mean, if I ha if I can just get a bite, it was just a regular size, regular profile. That's why I wanted to go. What? Uh, what? He's what, running out of questions. <laughs> well, Brucey, you're the co-host. I asked no, lots I already. already. Are we, hey, are we already leak holding? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I, I didn't even know that. We just, yeah. <laughs> I thought we were just talking. No, no. It's, it's the same thing. It's not, oh, not okay. very formal, but I told Brad that usually I do all the talking, like I'm the motor mouth, and okay. I, I told him that he's got to ask all the questions tonight, and it sounds like we just uh, we just timed out on his questions. So oh, okay. We'll, okay, we'll cool. just keep bullshitting. All right. yeah, that's <laughs> I want to hear when you first came over here. How many years have you been here? It's been – first year I came over was like – I thought it was 2000 – two so it's been 21 years ago wow and i literally came out i came back over here you know i i didn't have the money at all back in 2002 so i went back to japan and worked for tra transport company and trying to make enough money to come back and i finally get back in 2005 started fishing as coin side so when you came 2002 there that was probably right on the crest of like GPS and boats. Oh and yeah, pretty much. And FRW was big back then. What was that? FRW tour was kind of oh, you know FLW, had a good time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So no GPS. You come over. You, it must have been wild just landing and getting to these places. Oh, Did yeah, you have because... someone that like helped you out and kind of no, steered you in the right the direction? The only word I knew back then was just, "Could you take me out?" <laughs> that's it so i i was waiting at the boat ramp down in the florida and asked me a few guys and of course not too many want, people want to take me out but one guy stopped me and said fine that's a guy i'm still dealing with how how did you how did you find your way around without is that's right before phone gps and you didn't know the language that had to be a crazy travel yeah man. yeah it was but you know just back then we all had like little book buying a little book at the walmart you know map book and yeah <laughs> you know it, it was i i didn't even know how i did it but well somehow i made it to the phone ramp <laughs> and it, that, it, that is so crazy yeah. what did you, back I, then we didn't have an iphone either so that's you know since iphones come up I can do anything now, but back then, the, each text cost me a, a dollar each time. Whoa! So if I talk to the, my girlfriend back in the home, you know, I told I told her, "Hey, just just be easy with it." It's not your kind of money. <laughs> Were you? You're in a nice truck camper now. Oh yeah. I'm, would you, I'm would happy you sleep about in it. before? Uh I mean, back then I started was just sleeping in the car, but since I got it my friend with it we travel was for like three years when i was calling your side and i ran out of money again went back to home and walked for started guiding at the lake beaver that's the kind of time i started designing baking stuff yeah and you know works out good that's how i get came back over in probably like 2010. yeah that's so uh, always trying to trying to start it off, but it took me a while. So really, 20 years old it was was about the time I could have get started. Oh, man, that's an extra hurdle. We got a, a guy that stayed with us last year from Australia. Uh -huh. And like, you know, they don't nobody knows anyone. It's so expensive in the US now. Like you gotta save up forever to come just try it for a bit. Right, right. And he actually won an open as a, on the co side at Wheeler. Oh Lake. yeah, I, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, old Tommy. And, uh, yeah. yeah. So I talked to him here and there, and it's like, oh, yeah, he's just 
go back and grind your ass off and try to do anything you can to scrape it yep. together enough to come back and try it mm. again. And it's like, yep. it's such a hurdle. Like I'm from Canada. So I just, I, I just got to drive over a border and drive further than everyone. Right. Like, it's it's a to... little different between the Canada and America. You guys are almost like brother and sister. Yeah. It's way but, easier. It's, yeah, a, it's but... a little extra pain in the ass, but it's nothing like, you know, coming right, from right. Japan or Australia. Like that's yeah. wild. At least yeah, Australians but, kind of speak the same language, so it might be a little right, bit easier. Right. <laughs> but uh, what it is, even the American guys, it's pretty hard to do it because you got to quit the job if you get on the road like, like what we do. And it's yeah. a, it's a, it's a hell of a gamble for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. Yes. <laughs> I concur. Yeah. You better be doing more than just calling people scopers and uh, oh yeah, no, hey, like, you like, better get like I'm, I'm, I'm 42 years old. I ain't got a time to complain about it. No, that's what I mean. You know, it may walk out sometime or another on the smaller circuit or something, but we're in the, right in the middle of a, you know, scoping century right now. Yeah, and, and you're, you're thriving. I don't, know, I don't even know how long I got last. I just got along and whatever coming up. Yeah, you should, so, uh, for every time you, I'm not that you're probably ever going to get the boot from the elites, but you'd think there would be like a clause for every time you requalify, like you get a point or something. Cause they give the, has that been talked about at all? Cause they, if you uh -huh. win a classic or an angler of the year, you get a, you know, a point, a legends exemption point that counts yeah. against. Yeah. Did, has there been any talk of giving, you one of those for requalifying, or is that just no? Cool? No, I don't have nothing like that. That's what I was asking about the requalification from the open because I skipped it twice, but they don't do it. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> I just gotta stay, stay, stay steady in this elite series. Yeah, they're probably just like, if you're good enough to do it twice, you're not going anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> that's I mean, you're probably safe. I, I, I would say it's kind of getting harder and harder every year. That. But that's the way the professional sports is supposed to be. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't want to see the same guy catching the same fish on the same way, same spot every year. That's not the bass fishing. I love it. So whatever coming up, you know, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, like some people say that it's gonna hurt the fish population, and whatever. Hey, trust me, we hurt the shallow population in the past. Yeah. You know that <laughs> you're oh, yeah. over forty years old. You know that we screwed the shallow up for all <laughs> yeah. years. That's what ended up happening. Yeah, you screwed now, it up so bad that they go and spawn oh, so fifteen bad feet for now. Hundred years, <laughs> and now we've been missing all the offshore school for even a year. Of course, they got a more majority of the fish moved out. That's that's only happened. So now we got it more offshore fish, but it's going to pound it pretty quick. And now starting over. Yeah. I think everyone's kind of been wait like what you said about, you know, all the offshore fish, it, like the banks starting to play more. And that's what people have been saying about the live scope for the last yeah. this I, couple I think, of years. And they're like, well, it's not happening yet, but it's, a, it's obviously eventually going that way. It's, it's just taking a lot like longer. I keep saying it, it's, it's already happening in Japan. Yeah. That's already happened. It didn't take a long. So I'm I'm still <laughs> kind of surprised every time I've seen it. They're biting that good with a scoping. That is good news. I like to hear that because everything that happens in Japan comes here and happens. So that's good news. Yeah. So we kind of got to expect that what's coming coming up next. Like we had a big time with the Sukumata back in probably 2010 or 2015, somewhere around that range. I mean, we caught them and take second matter shad, just a jig head or a Carolina rig. And back then, we all, we caught almost every single fish we had in the Lake Biwa. And after that, this, you know, photo facing saunas come out. We stopped using, but it was too late. It's almost, you know, impossible to get them bite on the second matter. So that, that's time you know, copper scab to show up. Oh. The poop. So it, the yep, poop. Yep. That that lasts five years. Longer than second matter the other. So I'm kinda think that could be a way. And the people a lot of people talking about dice thing, but it only lost for 
I know is on a couple week. Wow. Oh, thank so, God uh, I didn't buy any of those suckers yet. <laughs> yeah, but you know that that's kind of that's not the same. I'm I'm pretty sure. So you know, there's more scoping guys here in America now than it was. So it could have been a different way, but I think you guys you guys got a better cover in the shallow too. So I think it's gonna be pretty interesting here about a couple of years. So yeah, the U.S. Yeah. was late to the scoping party, I think. Cause like the Australians already had it dialed in like uh -huh. perspective. Uh -huh. I, I, I probably had one of the few perspective uh -huh. scopes on my boat last year and everyone has it now, but uh -huh. like, you know, it seems like it's still a step behind on the electronics front. Like the Aussies had that thing dialed in. Uh -huh. uh, you saw Chris and Corey Johnston uh -huh. dummy everyone with the forward, like before, you know, yeah. kind of on the you inside know, of it. What's the cool thing about all the Japanese here, guys. Yeah. I mean, if you're a scoping guy, you know, everybody have a different setup. And even the same brand and same screen, everybody have a different perspective. So that's a kind of, kind of, kind of thing we have to, you know, professional fishermen is less possible to talk about it because, you know, some people say, you know, we have to sound a, just a jig head in the Mickey rig. But to me, the, you know, for the facing sauna is not just that, you know what I mean? Yeah, you there's a lot of refinements. Oh, yeah, like I'm fishing old school with a for the facing sauna, even a square bill. But I'm talking to the guy in the fishing industry. He said they are not selling the crankbait. I'm like, what? <laughs> I mean, the last year I, I caught a 20 pound on just a cranking scoping. Why would you think you just, you know, you gotta stay with a jig head the whole time? Yeah. Uh, well, it's that jig head minnow, like that's already kind of played out around here. And it just does. Being, like that, but down I, south, it's still, it's still on the rise. We're here. It's, uh -huh. <laughs> we're yeah. on the back I mean, end. It, it does work in the wintertime and the early spring, but in the shad spawn time, and you gotta do it somewhere, somewhere else. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't think. I, I don't know why the, some people complain so much about a scoping. Yet they didn't have to worry that much, I don't think. Even though last year in the late series, we had several scoping events and also several shad spawn, pretty much 50 50. And we had a Koya too. <laughs> so it's not the robot. It's not, yeah, it's not really. I mean, people wanted too much about it. Is there anyone like Koya? Like, are you still in touch with? Do you go back home, or do you uh, just no. live in the U.S. now? Uh, just, just, I'm only back in the home in the winter time, just a couple months a year. So, is there any like? Are there any other up and comers behind uh, the Prince that are like? Are there anyone just as scary, or is he kind of like an anomaly of the young uh, these guys? I mean, there's a lot of guys came over this year. You know, I, I don't know how long. I, I mean, most supplies thing I, about the courier is to me, he learned it so quick. I mean, it took me 10 years to learn about American fishing from to me, but he already catches it anywhere he goes. So I, I'm kind of surprised about that. I mean, where the fish is completely different. We don't have a shed or we don't have nothing like that. But he still yeah. catches, so that's that's the number one amazing thing to me. He learned it quick. Yeah, it's been unbelievable to watch. Yeah, I mean, it, he's not doing just the one thing. He has more trick than what we are thinking. He's Even a pretty secretive too know. about it. Oh yeah, he is. So he was pretty you know, proud of his spinner bait at Grand Lake, though. He was showing everyone that on live. Oh really? Oh, I didn't <laughs> yeah. know that. Yeah, he doesn't hide that. <laughs> yeah, I think he, he he has more. You know. The tackle was sick with than people saying so he gets a second matter because you know he already make enough money on that and he's got a, probably 10 more in the behind <laughs> yeah yeah every decision's calculated with him man. yeah yeah he's just natural not the just good at a sculpting and yeah, you're I, on the you're on the competition you know that it's not yeah. that easy yeah i would figure you'd take his scopes away and he'd still be pretty deadly I'm pretty sure because what it is, he will learn it about the bass fishing was that for the facing sonar saying you will already know 
how the fish is going back and forth or how they react it. Yeah. So you don't have to read a book to learn about how fish is moving around. You can just go out and, you know, see where they look at it and stuff like that. And also the, the difference between our age guys and the younger guys is they can research you real quick too. They can get online and find on the Instagram or YouTube video. Yeah, that's Brucey's secret to life. He's the best <laughs> pre scoper I've ever seen. I can't um, even get a computer to work. Most of the time my phone yeah, don't work. I, I'm I'm the same way, trust me. Yeah, that's why we get along so good. We can't figure out anything. Yeah. <laughs> so we gotta we gotta be good at it. At least the iPhone. Just how to just punch it in the the keywords. Yeah. yeah. And that's how they grew up in the school, how they find us you know stuff they want to know yeah i've so taken I course, I'm taking courses on research like on open source um yeah yeah internet research so that helps me a little bit but that's oh, the yeah, reason it definitely that. does so that i mean it, people complain about scoping but it, are they are they going to take the iphone away from it yeah take youtube away <laughs> yeah. take youtube before scoping you learn way yeah, more yeah, yeah that's a lot a lot of way more on us <laughs> YouTube, and uh, that's what I'm kind of do, you know. Anyway, I'm going and kind of give me an idea, but it don't show anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. But just if you took YouTube away, you wouldn't have so many painful YouTube channels out there either, because uh, everyone, because yeah. like everyone's got to have one now, right? Right, that right. Like, and it shows even a spot. Yeah. Oh well, well that's, that's, really a, that's the best way to learn about fishing now. Seems that way. Yeah. I I always watch Get the Net. That's how I learn a lot. What is it? Get the Net. It's Brucey's YouTube. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to start watching that. Yeah, you need. Yeah, to, you better. Tyler Tyler Williams was on there. Your buddy and Gussie was just there. He was making fun of uh, cry babies that wouldn't. He said all the all the guys that were crying about live scope, none of them showed up at Lanier. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's and yeah, like a guy. I mean, I don't think if Johnston's complain about it. No, I, I don't yeah. think Drew Cook's complain about it either. No. I mean, they, no, they, that's what I mean. None, yeah, none of the you know the the guy the quote unquote old school guys that are saying yeah. live scopes ruining the sport, not it up and fished it. They just uh-huh. didn't, didn't I mean, fish it. What do people people miss about the John Cox? I mean, he's still. Tens on the points, AOI. Yeah. He doesn't even have a depth finder, I don't think. Uh, I don't think so either. So I had a, I had a still got the old... open, and still, he kicked my ass. He's got that old four tracks. I've got a four mm-hmm. tracks on, on like an old tin boat that's, mm-hmm. you know, and when you go from a, like an, a, a power drive trolling motor to a four track. Uh-huh. It feels like the pedal's going to explode. You got to push so hard to turn it, because <laughs> right. like, we're so used to the easy steering ones now. When you right, jump back right. on, it's crazy. His calves are probably like pumpkins from turning that damn thing. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, all right, man. Well, yeah. uh, you got two big derbies in Florida coming up. It's going to be fun oh, to yeah. watch. Yeah, uh, I'm, a, I'm just trying to survive that one because you know I'm all, always always get my as way up there in Florida, so just trying to survive the top fifty. Ah, oh, you never know. You've never been there post spawn. Yeah. And yeah, well, that's that's a good good part of it. Like you hit it like early generally. I don't know that about it, but in the post spawn, it's kind of fair. And you were just there at the Harris chain in October for the open, so Yeah, that's what I you know, I'm happy about it. Got to feel her out a little. I think you'll yep. be okay. And if you're not, you just go beat everyone's ass at uh, Logan Martin. <laughs> oh yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a really good one. I'm excited about Logan Martin. So I always that. like the fishing in the Coosa River. So yeah, it's gonna be fun to watch, fun to follow. Thanks, mm-hmm. uh, thanks for jumping on, man. It was fun. Yeah, good to get too. a different perspective, and uh, yeah. we'll let you get back to your loves parking lot and your elite series right. schedule. All right. Okay, man. Take care. Right, easy. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, thanks, buddy. Bye. 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 Brad, Brucey, you did pretty good. Oh, thanks. You know what I was thinking? You know, like, 
how there's so much negativity in fishing right now and how awesome it is. There's three of us on a podcast tonight from three different countries getting to know each other that would never met each other without fishing. Like, that's pretty cool and positive for fishing. Yeah. The best thing, like he said, he's 42 to not like you need to have that attitude that he has to Absolutely. make it the, you know, we're all crying and, and bitching about stuff is going to do is set you back. Um, you know, we talk about it for fun uh, and whatever. It's fun to bitch once in a while and it's, it makes yeah. uh, interesting content, but, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's just slowing you down. Like he's got a, you know, he came over here when he was 21, like was disadvantaged in every single way and still found a way to grind his ass up. And now he's the boss. He is the boss. I mean, that guy is a legend already and I can't get over how happy he is like his attitude and, I think that's part of not complaining is having a good attitude, you know, like it goes hand in hand, you know? Yeah. Um, all right, Bard, your, your Bard. roommate drunk would just, uh, just texted me a picture of oh, you. Boy. Hey, texted One me man. a picture of you podcasting. Oh, I'm a podcaster. Yeah. He put, he sent, I'll show you. Oh yeah. That's me. What's on his I cup. There's like a, there's a drawing on his cup, some profanity. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know the strong wood very well, but I bet y'all know him better after a couple of days. <laughs> He's a good dude. You guys are going to have fun. All right. Well, well, uh, we'll uh, thanks. catch up with you after Logan Martin. Thanks. Bass galaxy. Uh, do all the like and the subscribe and that kind of thing. And I think Pat's got a show coming up with, uh, Hamner right away. The last one had to cancel, but keep an eye out for it. Perfect. Well, everyone have a good night and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.